Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to worship here at St. Andrew's United Methodist Church in Cherry Hill. My name is Pastor Josh, and we are so excited that you've decided to journey with us today. Whether you're watching on Sunday morning, you're watching later that day, later the week, or even later than that. We're just so excited that you've decided to spend some time with us. We just wanted to let you know a little bit about what you can expect while you are worshiping with us. We'll spend some time in song together. There'll be an opportunity for you to be able to participate with us in our virtual community here through our call to worship and our prayer time. Pastor Cricket has a great uh, children's chat for us, and so we'll look forward to that. And uh, folks of all ages, those who are children at heart, are still welcome to listen. I have a couple announcements, and then we are in the midst of a sermon series called Rising Strong. We're going to look at today the idea of rising above denial in the aspect of forgiveness. Well, friends, again, we're so excited you've decided to join us. We invite you now to continue with us in worship. Please join me now for our call to worship, and I invite you to say with me the words that are in bold on your screen. Lord, help us to forgive ourselves, to not shut people out and judge them. We have failed, but we all deserve a second chance. Grace in forgiving changes our hearts. Peace be with you. Please join me now in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Loving and eternal God, we gather before you today, thankful and grateful that we serve you, our Redeemer, our God of the second chance. You know the depths of our soul and our tendency to stray from you. Remind us that the way we live and the words we speak reveal our faith. Forgive us when we walk in ways that are contrary to your truth. Remind us that in confessing our sins, we can rise from our mistakes to move forward in your forgiving love in order to share that love with others. Transform our minds and reveal your spirit within us. Open us to the generosity of forgiveness and giving second chances. To you be all honor and glory. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I love you, Lord. Hi kids, it's Pastor Cricket. Well, I'm doing a presentation later today, so I figured I would write my name on the board behind me so that everybody would know who I am. So I wrote Pastor Cricket. Hold on though. Do you see something that's not quite right in my name? You know, when I was little, I used to reverse letters all the time. And sometimes as an adult, I still reverse letters. And I used to get so embarrassed about it. I would be ashamed of it. But look, it's just this easy. I just erased my mistake and fix it. And now it looks right. And that's what God does with us, isn't it? When we make mistakes, maybe we get embarrassed, maybe we feel bad, but God just erases our mistakes and gives us another chance to make it right. So I want to encourage you to do the same thing. If there are people in your life that maybe make mistakes that hurt you, try to think about what Jesus teaches us. Think about the way God would respond to us and erase their mistake. Give them a second chance and forgive. Well, friends, we have a couple of announcements this week. We're going to start with uh, an announcement for the ladies. We will be having uh, a tea, and you can contact the office to be able to get tickets. Tickets are uh, $10 per person, and it's a tea and fashion show. And so this should be a really good time. It's going to take place on Saturday, April 29th at noon. And so again, you can call the office to be able to get tickets, and this should really be a fun time uh, that our UWF, which is uh, United Women in Faith, that's our women's ministry here at the church, is putting on. And so we're excited to be able to bring this back and to do this for you. The next two announcements involve uh, our preschool that we have here um, the school has done a lot to be able to help the church within the last uh, year and a half. And so they're having an art show and book fair. And uh, this is an opportunity where the kids, uh, we have about 150 or kids, 50 or so kids uh, in the school here. And uh, these kids have worked hard to be able to put some artwork together. And so it's going to be on display. And so we're going to invite the church to come out and to support the school since the school has done so much supporting of the church. And so this is going to be on May 10th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And so we invite you to be able to join us for that. It should be a good time. Uh, I'm excited to see uh, not only my daughter Raylan's work, but a bunch of these other kids' work. Uh, if you're here during uh, pickup time, they are a hoot, let me tell you. Uh, and we have some good conversations. I learn a lot about trains and different things. But... Uh, 
we have a great school here, and it'd be nice if we as a church could support them. Tying into that, they're going to be doing a book collection, a children's book collection of um, gently used books. And there's going to be a colorful bin that's in the narthex, uh, which is one of the main places you walk into when you walk into our church. And uh, in there, they're collecting all different kinds of books for kids. And so if you have any in the house uh, that you want to drop off, that would be great. You can bring them to the church office. We'll make sure that we get them to the bin for you. But uh, let's try to support uh, this nonprofit called Book Smiles. We wanted to let you know, um, our last announcement is for uh, the kids. And we're going to be doing um, a celebration of uh, Earth Day and Arbor Day. And so we're going to be planting a, a tree, uh, planting trees. And that's going to be on May 7th from 1130 to 1245. We'll have lunch that will be provided. So this is a good time to be able to uh, give back to nature as we're called to be stewards of the earth. Well, friends, those are the announcements that we have for this week. We invite you to continue on in worship with us. Well, friends, our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 15 through 19. And this is what our scripture has for us. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend to my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands. Someone else will fasten the belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus calls us. Jesus calls us for the tumult of our lives while grass we see. Sweet boy sounded, saying, Christian, follow me. Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's golden store. From each idol, let God keep us, saying, Christian, not me more. Jesus calls Denial. What are some things that come to mind when you hear that word? Is there any redemption from denial? We see in scripture that there's people that deny that they know Jesus, but is there redemption? I want to start by sharing a story with you involving a fire department in Virginia. And this fire department, uh, they were really excited uh, when the Jaws of Life first came out, and they were excited to be able to show the, the town and uh, the, all the people that were there just what the Jaws of Life are able to do. And so as they uh, are getting ready and they're showing off and they're uh, tearing apart this uh, old Buick, uh, all of a sudden there's one person who's really unhappy with what's happening and he's yelling out, stop, 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 and the uh, the fire department is like no we're trying to show what this uh, what these jaws of life are able to do and 
Sure enough, wouldn't you know, the person that was yelling, stop, 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 it was, oh, it was their car. Whoops. And the, the chief of the fire department, the fire chief, he, he just kept saying it was a mistake, it was a mistake, it was a mistake. This man, he was livid, and I can't necessarily uh, blame him. But the question is, when someone hurts you with a mistake, is that something that you're able to forgive? We as humanity have a really hard time with forgiveness, don't we? Uh, when people do something that hurts us, we have a very hard time of letting go of the burden well, that we carry with us in life. But I want you to think about a time in your life where you were given a second chance and that it had this impact on your life, whether the impact was big or small. Maybe it was just a lesson that you were able to learn. Oftentimes, the world and the culture that's at large, they don't encourage us to be very generous with our second chances. It's kind of, you burn me once and you cut, we cut you out. We sometimes close off different opportunities for heal relationships or we just continue to hold grudges. Why? Why do we do that? Is it because of the pain that we've experienced, of the hurt that we've experienced in our life? Well, Peter, in John chapter 18, verses 15 through 18, makes a big mistake. He denies Jesus three times, denies that he even knows Jesus. It's something that Peter, he has no problem doing it the first time. He doesn't really feel any guilt by it. He does it again, doesn't really feel any guilt by it. It's not until the third time that it really kind of clicks with Peter exactly what had happened, that Jesus had foretold that this was going to happen. And here he is denying Jesus. Well, despite this lack of faithfulness and friendship, Jesus still invites Peter into discipleship. In fact, Jesus meets him and the other disciples with a gesture of companionship and abundance. Fish for breakfast. That may not sound too appealing to us, but back in Bible times, that was indeed often breakfast. And this is found in John chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. Peter had an imperfect love for Jesus. But that imperfect love which is a love that oftentimes you and I have with God, that we have with others, this imperfect love. Well, it doesn't seem to change Jesus' unchanging love for Peter and for us, or God's love for, if we're honest, imperfect humanity. See, forgiveness, it allows us to journey from the moments where we deny Jesus or we make other big relationship-harming mistakes it moves us from that to reconciliation with God and renewed faithfulness. See, in John chapter 20, verse 22, Jesus says, If you forgive someone else's sin, that they are forgiven through the Holy Spirit. Our forgiveness allows the power of God to move, to change, and to reconcile. So the power of Jesus' forgiveness, it's evident in his willingness to feed Peter and to address him as friend, even after Peter's denial. Yet our passage, John 21, 15 through 19, it shows us that on the other side of forgiveness, oh, Jesus calls and empowers Peter to a changed and renewed life, a life of being of servant leadership, feeding and tending Jesus' own sheep, as a shepherd to a flock. Often we think of forgiveness as a solution to a problem, but what this passage shows is how forgiveness is a first step, a foundation that frees Peter for a life of faith and a key leadership role early on in the church. So friends, God not only promises us reconciliation and or justification, which is a healed relationship through forgiveness, but also redemption, sanctification, a changed life through the Holy Spirit in which we actively participate. See, Peter's denial of Jesus does not define him. In fact, it never did. 
Long before Jesus' death and resurrection, he called Peter the rock upon which his church would be built. That's from Matthew 16, 18. In our passage from John 21, we see Jesus commissioning Peter to be this rock. And if we look ahead, for example, in Acts 15, 7 through 11, we can see Peter living in his strength as this rock of the church. How often do we let our mistakes define us? Or we let our mistakes just derail us from living the lives that we were made for? How might the example of Peter, who accepted the full power of Jesus' forgiveness to move forward in following God's inspirational life and the call, how can we take that and let it inspire us? See, here's the thing about forgiveness. I equate it to holding a small stone. The grudge or the hurt that somebody, well, that it did to you, it's like holding a small stone within your fist. So you can hold the small stone within your fist if you're holding it out. No problem. It's not that heavy. But the longer you hold it, the longer you hold it with your arm out, well, the harder it gets, the more painful it gets. And then when you finally let that stone go, the longer you've held it, the longer it takes for the feeling to come back in your arm. Friends, that's how it is with forgiveness as well. If we choose to just continuously hold grudges, well, it's like we're holding that pebble. We're holding that small stone. What we're called to do is to let that stone go. Forgiveness. Grace things that we experience. So how would you begin to forgive someone? What would be your first steps in moving towards this? What does it look like to love the way that Jesus loves us? Love to both others, but also to ourselves. Friends, forgiveness is hard. And it often doesn't happen right away, does it? Most often, forgiveness is a process. But as we're in this journey, as we're in this process, we need to ask ourselves what freedom might be found for us and for others with this act of forgiveness. How might we accept the forgiveness Jesus offers us for the mistakes that we are holding back? Oftentimes, friends, it starts first with an awareness of the mistake, bringing it to God in confession. Sometimes it starts with a trusted friend of the faith who will remind you that you are forgiven. And so we are called to forgive. See, like Jesus called Peter to feed and tend his sheep. If you truly loved him, what action might Jesus be calling you to take? in order to fully embrace and embody your forgiveness. We'll close with a story about President Lincoln. And President Lincoln uh, had this great adversary uh, when he was uh, running for president named Edward Stanton, or Edwin Stanton, I apologize, Edwin Stanton. And Edwin Stanton said a lot of really terrible things about Lincoln. I mean, we've watched political debates, we've watched the commercials, uh, you know, right around October, uh, in uh, early September through September and into October, y- you watch the channels and it's just how horrible the other person is, right? There's really no uplifting things unless the ad is about themselves. Well, it's no different back when Lincoln was running. So Edwin, he just said a bunch of really terrible things. But see, what Lincoln did after he won is Lincoln took time, and he chose him. He chose Edwin to be his secretary of war, which seems odd to take this rival, someone who spoke horribly about you, and then appoint them into a key position of leadership. So Edwin Stanton was asked about this. He really didn't have much to say in the beginning, but then Edwin Stanton actually spoke at Lincoln's funeral, and this is what he said. There lies the most perfect ruler of men this world has ever seen. 
See, friends, Lincoln, he learned not to take things personally. But he also understood the art of forgiveness. The longer you hold on to things, it's like that pebble. It's like that stone. It gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And then eventually when you release it, there's still ripple effects. But can the same lessons be said of us? Are we people who have still taken things too personally, what others have done to us? What others have said about us? Are we still holding grudges? See, friends, we all mess up. We all make mistakes. Sometimes we hurt others. Sometimes we hurt ourselves. And sometimes others hurt us. So the question for us as we go this week is, are you going to continue to carry the stone? Are you going to continue to carry the grudge? Or is it finally time to let that stone go? Amen. Friends, at this time, we're going to give our tithes, our gifts. And at this time, we invite you, if you're able or you would like, to be able to send something in, whether it's in the mail or on the website. The information is down below. We're going to invite you to bow your heads and hearts with us as we pray a blessing over these gifts that are received now and throughout the week. God, we offer our gifts and talents to you after asking for forgiveness. We pray that these gifts will multiply after your cleansing grace leads us to forgive our neighbors as well as ourselves. We serve you in the name of Jesus. Amen. My Jesus, I love thee. Final thoughts. Well, friends, as we go this week, this is a good week. It's a reminder that forgiveness is there, that God's forgiveness is out there for us. But it can also be a week of challenge, self-reflection, a week where we reflect, is there something that we're holding on to like that stone? Is it time to let that stone go? Do you need to have a hard conversation this week? Well, friends, whether you are leaving our service today and you are in a place of celebration where you are celebrating God's grace or you're in a place 
where you are in reflection and thinking hard about a conversation that you have to have. Friends, may you know that God's grace is there as well. May we carry that hope with us into a world that needs hope. Amen. Make me a channel of your peace.